Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, everybody, and thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. I'm John Coleman, and my co-founder for Celebrating Act 2, Art Kirsch, is right next to me. Hey there, and John. Art, today, we you have a special guest for us, an old friend of yours. Yeah, well, he's a, he's a, a friend of long standing. Uh, in, our, in our world, I don't call people old friends. Oh, Although excuse I do me. Have a, I do have a guy who's uh, uh, 88. I guess he is an old friend. He's an old friend, right? yeah. But uh, now John uh, Ludwig, who uh, we'll meet in a moment, uh, uh, part of my second act was I got into making films and commercials and things like that. Right. And um, I met John about, oh, a dozen years ago, maybe longer, after I had done Film 101 and uh, got a group together. And he um, had written an original screenplay uh, about, uh, and in fact, I'll have a link in the bottom of it. And he entrusted me to produce it. So we've been buddies for a long time. And we also have a background. We were both in the Marines. Uh, but uh, the, John has, has so many second acts, uh, so many things that he keeps reinventing, things that he does and does good for other people. But the one that I want to uh, uh, share with everybody today is uh, uh, John uh, was a uh, Marine pilot and uh, both a fixed wing and helicopters. And um, after he got out of the Marine Corps, he flew in Africa as a commercial pilot in the Middle East and uh, eventually came back and um, joined the reserves because he just loved flying and uh, eventually was in a helicopter accident where uh, he, be, uh, he became confined to a wheelchair. Uh, so uh, maybe, I think it's about 30 years ago, he reinvented himself. He went back and got a master's degree in uh, marriage uh, uh, counseling, family therapy. He's been, uh, in addition to doing that as a second career, uh, he's also been a, a disaster counselor for the Red Cross and um, a lot of other things. And there are going to be some links you can find out a whole lot more about John. But today we're going to talk about a very special project he's put together called Muriel's Angels. Uh, and I'm going to let uh, first say hello to John. Hey, John, how you doing? Gentlemen, thank you. And thank you for having me in uh, celebrating uh, Act uh, 2. Hey, yep. hey John, uh, you are the perfect guest for celebrating Act 2. Well, first of all, you're over that magic age of, we like to call it the young age of 50. Yeah. <laughs> But what a guy. You've done so much in your second act. You've had, as Art just described, you've done a number of second acts. Uh, but Muriel's Angels is really um, a wonderful, wonderful organization. Tell us exactly what it is and how you started it. Well, let me, I'll, I'll start from the genesis of, of how we came about and forming Muriel's Angels. As it, It's a 5013C registered uh, with the feds in the state of California charity, nonprofit. Uh, some years ago in 2018, uh, by chance, serendipity, so to speak, I met a gentleman in a department store and we started chatting because he saw that I was in a wheelchair. And long story short, um, he had a son that had some congenital disabilities, uh, serious disabilities. And uh, the family had a real hard time taking the child to doctor's appointments and all. So I said, you know what, uh, I, I think I can help you out. So I funded a, a van for them to use with the understanding that if something happened uh, to Riley, and, it's, and you can see what, unfortunately, he, he, he died some years back, but he was the impetus for starting Muriel's Angels. So we got the van for him and the family. And from there, I decided to form a charity that would help children and families such as Riley's family. Um, the name of it is Muriel's Angels. And it was named after my mother who passed away a couple of years, a few years ago at the age of 95, who was always involved with social cause, causes and uh, community volunteer work, et cetera. So um, myself and a gentleman who was the son of my um, uh, 
my partner in the in a psychology clinic who has also passed away, but his son, who graduated from um, Columbia with a degree in um, health services, he's a PhD. Uh, he's we decided to put this in, and make this a charity called Muriel's Angels, and we registered it, and it's basically for people that that are in Orange County, families that have children who have disabilities. Now, let me explain our niche. Um, SSI and a lot of state agencies and local agencies provide medical care for children, no matter what the income of the family is. Uh, they provide things like wheelchair medication and things like that. But what they do not provide is transportation for the family. They can call up and get transportation, but that is such a hassle when they have to wait and make doctor's appointments, etc. So the niche that we have found, not that we don't care, take care of smaller things, is getting these families a van that is outfitted for, uh, for wheelchair accessibility. Uh, uh, John, John, um... Uh, give us some idea of what these things cost. I mean, this isn't that like getting a, a van, running into a dealership and getting a van. They, they are far more uh, complicated than that, aren't they? That's, that's correct, and that's a good question, Art. I, again, our, our, we've been, uh, our, our charity started and was registered in 2018. And since then, we have been recognized by a couple agencies in Orange County and all that. We've supplied these families with vans. But to your point, uh, it's not like buying a wheelchair. It's not like buying a cane or, or, or some appliance for the child. These vans cost anywhere used from fifteen to $40,000. So uh, back to our charity, uh, we've supplied three vans this year to families. Uh, raising funds is very difficult. Uh, we take no money for our administrative costs. It's all, um, all our costs are taken care of internally. As much as our donations for buying these vans, we are funded internally. And we hope as we get more recognized and get more requests coming in, that we're able to raise some funds that we can able that will enable us to uh, provide more let me families. Ask you this, let me ask you this as, as well, John. Um, I, you said Orange County, since we're a national uh, audience. Uh, it, let's be sure it's Orange County, California. Although, if you found a, a family in LA or uh, some adjacent area, uh, it's just because you happen to live in Orange County, so it's uh, that's sort of like the center of it. But um, uh, if somebody wanted to make a contribution, find out first of all, find out about more about Muriel's Angels. Uh, is there a website they can go to, and perhaps uh, if they were interested, uh, either maybe they they might be able to help out either with funding or something else. Where where could they go find out more about Muriel's Angels? Yeah, thank you, Art. Uh, we do have a website, uh, murielsangels.org. Murielsangels, Angels, one word, all all uh, lowercase. dot org. And uh, you will see what we have done in the last uh, three or four, or since our beginning, actually. Uh, we've had some press, we've had some recognition by some of the local agencies. But to your point, Art, um, yes, we're based in Orange County, um, but we've supplied a van through contacts um, outside of Orange County up to LA. And we even delivered a van where we had some TV coverage up in Fresno. So um, we're California based in Orange County, but that doesn't mean that if we find somebody within the proximity that we're able to help, we'll do that. And uh, our donations on our website are hopefully come from all over because our cause is our, our cause is an important cause, and it fills in a lot of a lot of needs for families that can't afford these things. And if you look at our website, you'll find that uh, our last big donation was a van that had to a family that had three kids, all with muscular dystrophy, 
that for the first time were able to travel as a family unit in the van that we supplied. Yeah. And uh, we've fortunately have worked with a, 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 a narrow mobility that has helped us with some of the prices and some of the the work that has to be done to these vans. So um, we're um, happy that they have kind of joined us in helping us with some funds to provide these vans. Well, you're doing great work, John, and, and it, I think people don't realize how many little things, not so little really, like transportation fall between the cracks uh, for people in need like that, particularly for children and wheelchairs. Um, and so you're, you're filling that need. I think it's really important um, that you're doing that. I think that's great. And the fact is that as you get more donations and you grow, you'll be able to help more and more kids. And, uh, and well, also, I would like to say, uh, before I uh, turn over to John uh, so for some final words, is that uh, the thing that, uh, as a celebrating act two, we find particularly interesting about John is he's a perfect example of everybody who is uh, over 50, who's living longer, healthier lives, and uh, you just don't go sit in a rocking chair and fade away. And there, <laughs> there are lots of things, okay? John started a whole new career as a marriage uh, uh, family counseling uh, uh, specialist. He's got license for it. And uh, he's, he's done a number of other things, which again, when you read his uh, life story, if you take a look at the link uh, down below, uh, you'll see about that. But uh, now here's the part where John, because I control this, I can embarrass you a little bit, <laughs> but it's about us, not about uh, anybody else. Uh, another, another thing that John and I both have is we have a background. We were both Marines. John was a captain, I was a sergeant, but there's, a, there's something about this which always inspires me is that we don't, part of, of Marine Corps is that you don't leave anybody behind. You don't leave anybody behind. And, and John has taken it to a new level as a civilian of not leaving these families behind, especially with kids who have challenges and gives them a life, an opportunity to be more like the rest of us. So uh, that, that end of embarrassment 101, you'll get to me when we see each other in person. But uh, so, we, want to, we want to give you the last word. Well, I, I, want to, I want John's last word to, uh, John, I want you to talk about advice for the rest of us. Um, as you told the story, you met a guy in a, in a store, his kid needed help. You said, well, I might know somebody who could put something, and you end up start, starting a whole charity and buying vans for people. I mean, it's how, give me some advice for the rest of us when we see an opportunity uh, to help people. What, what can you tell us? Uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks uh, Art, for those kind words, by the way. Uh, Semper Fi, buddy. Semper Fi. And uh, my advice, you, you know, as we grow older and we're fortunate uh, to still be above ground and uh, maybe some of our careers are behind us, um, it's kind of like that, that hierarchy of needs from Maslow that... Uh, at the end of that pyramid, in the end of life, it's giving back, it's self-actualization, and the joy of doing something for somebody else, the altruistic nature of all of us, um, hopefully it has a payoff, and it makes, it makes one happy, and it makes one feel like they're still doing something constructive and giving back, and uh, that's a gift in itself. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for all the great work you're doing. And um, I'm looking forward to Act 3 when you gents put that out. Celebrating Act 3, is that a possibility? Yeah, <laughs> you're work we're working on it. Okay. <laughs> all right, gents. Thank Pleasure. you, John. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.